All right, welcome back to Ground Level Garage in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, as you can see behind me, I have two S30 cars in the garage today. Mine, being up on the lift right now, is going to stay there. Uh, I'm waiting on some parts from Japan. What we are going to do today is focus on a customer's car here. This beautiful blue Series 2 underneath um, belongs to our friend Mo. And for weeks now, he's been having a lot of trouble getting his carbs to run right. But yeah, sinking these at home and diving in without any pre-existing knowledge of how these work is a very intimidating process for anyone. But it's really not that complicated. We're going to use this as an opportunity to teach you guys at home how to tune your carbs. The rules are mostly universal. So if you don't have a Z car, but you have triples at home or doubles, any sort of side draft carburetor setup, the rules we're going to lay out here apply to all of you. With a little patience and some fine tuning, these things pay off in dividends, as you shall see. All right, so before we go into tuning the carbs on Moe's car, it's probably best that we go over here to the table and I walk you through a spare carb I have laying around. What we have here is a Weber DCOE 40 mil carburetor. You know, different companies make different sizes. Um, what the 40 refers to is the internal opening of the entire carburetor and what you have here at your throttle openings. The next piece of equipment that's gonna dictate the functional diameter of your carbs is gonna be the chokes you choose. These are your chokes, okay? Right here we have a 30 mil choke. This controls how much air enters the combustion chamber through the carburetor. What you're doing essentially is choking down the air velocity inside the carburetor. If, if you have a larger choke, the engine's gonna have a harder time sucking in enough air at idle. You know, think of it as a funnel. The air coming in from the vacuum is dragging in at a higher velocity. That way it's easier to calibrate how you richen up your air mixture at idle based on more air entering. As your car sits at idle, it generates a constant vacuum, okay, behind the throttle plates. Now, that vacuum is going to dictate how much air it pulls in when the throttle is cracked, okay? When your carburetor is choked down to a smaller size, the air comes in at a quicker velocity because it sucks through a tighter hole. On most car here, basically a street car, it's got a nice street build going on. A smaller choke is optimal for getting around town, you know, stoplight to stoplight, you know, low gears, generally lower RPM range uh, in daily driving or, you know, in traffic. The number of your choke size comes into play when you now start getting into choosing the size of your, your main jets and your air correctors, okay? These coming out right here, the ones in front, these hold your idle jets. The fuel runs through these things at idle and controls how much fuel you'll get at the bottom of your rev range at idle. These are actually, incidentally, properly sized for application on a 240. The 50 uh, refers to how big the uh, jet itself is and the F9 refers to where the air comes in on the side. These are your mains and your air correctors. Your main jets are at the bottom here, similar to the way that they're indicated on your idle jet. The number refers to the diameter of the hole opening. Uh, a general rule for choosing the size of your main jets is a little over four times the size of the choke. So with these chokes, the starting point for a main jet should be somewhere around 120, 130. At the top of your main jets, where your air correctors are, that's gonna some be somewhere around 40 or 50 over in size. And that'll be marked at the top. That's the diameter of your air corrector. So let's say we're looking for something around, you know, 130 and 170. It might be 140, 180, depending on how rich you want to run and the, the given mods on your car. All 
right, so when fuel enters through your idle jet, it runs into the casting back here to your progression holes. You know, you got three progression holes here. You know, later models have four. These progression holes deliver fuel at the bottom of the RPM range and at idle until the main circuit comes on and your main jets start delivering fuel to the, to the combustion chamber. Now, when you look inside here and you turn the butterflies of the throttle, you'll see your progression holes on the inside. So yeah, fuel comes in at idle in the progression holes, okay? That comes in to play when we start talking about setting our idle speed adjustment and our idle screw adjustment. On the side of your carburetor here, you have a screw. Underneath this screw is your uh, linkage arm that connects to the linkage on your, you know, your stock throttle assembly, however you have your carbs set up, and the internal butterflies of your carburetor. When you turn this clockwise, down like so, the bottom of this adjustment screw starts actuating that arm, thusly opening up the butterflies on your carburetor, okay? See that? There we go. But yeah, the whole point of this is to set the idle speed and how the latent mixture is entering the equation. Because what happens also, as, as you expose your progression hole, you're also allowing air to enter through the bottom of the butterfly, changing the way the vacuum pulls in air. The last thing I want to show you here before we move over is your idle mixture screw. Now, when fuel comes down and enters your progression holes, as we already showed you, it then too comes through a hole beneath your idle mixture screw. And that controls how much fuel comes in at idle. That's where your tunability is. On the older model DCOEs, the ones that were made in Italy, this screw is shorter, okay? So if you have this screw turned out more than one and a half, two turns, that's an indicator that your idle jet is likely too lean and you need a richer idle jet. On the flip side, if you have it backed out only like a half turn, that's probably a good indicator that your idle jet is too rich. As you turn this while the car's running, you'll hear the car start to stumble. You'll find where the sweet spot is and what the engine's asking for in terms of fuel delivery. This is on the Italian design. The idle mixture screw, pretty short, okay? Therefore, your turns on, on a design like this are only gonna be one and a one, you know, one to one and a half turns out. On the newer designs, the idle adjustment screw is longer, okay? And that allows for more fine tuning along the turns, and you can adjust that anywhere from like two to three turns out before you have to start, you know, reconsidering your idle jet size. So now that you know what these parts are and how this carburetor comes together, we're going to go over to Moe's car and actually tune it, set our baseline tune for syncing these carbs, getting them running right, referring to the parts and functions as you now know them, okay? First, we're going to disconnect the throttle linkage, and then we're going to disconnect our armature. And you're not going to get any fine-tuning carburetor to carburetor if they're all connected. And again, when these are disconnected, it's also a good time to check that all the armature is the same length. You know, they're all threaded the same way. You don't want one longer than the other because then, again, once you get on the throttle, the thing's not going to operate right. So first thing we're going to do is we're gonna go and zero everything out. So we're gonna turn our idle adjustment screws in until they're seated. Once you feel them snug, that's enough. You overturn them, you run the risk of changing the profile of your threads or jamming them up and changing the way they work. And then you're also going to back out 
your idle speed screws until you see that the armature is disengaged, all right? So watch. See, boom, they're out. All right, they're out. They're out. All right, cool. All right, so now that this stuff is zeroed out, uh, we're gonna start with setting up our idle speed screws. So what you wanna do is you wanna set these up until you see them engage, see there? They're engaging. So where it engages, find it in the screw, okay? Right here. From right here, where it's engaged, you give it a quarter turn. Boom, quarter turn. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. Great. That's basically where we want to start. What we've done now is move the butterfly just behind the first progression hole. Being as these are the old, older model Italian carbs, the adjustment needles for your idle mixture screw, your idle enrichment screw, they're the shorter ones. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start backing them out one full turn, and we're gonna tune from there when we turn the car back on, all right? One full turn is 180, and 180 again, okay? 180, and 180 again. When you do these, you start to realize where they're using flatheads for these. That way you can use it as a dial almost. You understand? 360, one turn. Turn. All right, so now that that's set up, we're gonna reconnect our linkage. The motor's still warm. Get it running and go back in to our idle adjustment screws and calibrate once more. All right, so now that it's running, I'm gonna back these out another quarter turn, okay? See what the change is. quarter turn. All right, so we're idling a bit high now. What we want to do is give it a half turn inward, which is counter one quarter turn from where we were before we opened them up a little more. See what it changes. If it starts to dip and stumble, we're getting back into the idle range we want to be at. All right, we got in too far. <laughs> the reason the car died is because the mixture leaned out too much. This tells us that the sweet spot for a good idle mixture is somewhere between the two rotations we just visited. So now that we're idling where we want it, just about a thousand RPMs, a little under, we're gonna check to see where we're at with our synchrometer. All right, so we, we're right where we wanna be, but now, in order to check these all, I have to take the stacks off to get a cleaner read. So we're gonna cut the engine again, keep everything where it is. So 
the middle carb is right where we want it to be, just around five. Looking a little rich here, just over seven. And looking really lean here. Um, but that also could be affected by the fact that we have a uh, vacuum pickup just behind this cylinder, which basically affects the way that this is, the synchrometer is going to read. Uh, but we want to get these as close as possible. We want to get them close to our middle carb here, which is right within the realm of where we want to be. So we're going to cut the engine again, disconnect the linkage, and I'm going to show you how to adjust for this. Uh, on a lot of other side draft setups, and Mo doesn't have it here, there's usually a balancing screw in between the linkages on these carbs. For whatever particular reason, he doesn't have them. I've seen a lot of setups without them. I'm going to show you how to adjust according to not having them uh, once I cut the engine. The balancing screws between the carbs, what they do is they balance between the actuations of two carbs along this axis, okay? There's a screw that functions in the middle. We don't have that here on this setup. I actually don't have it on my car either. Um, what you do is you go in here and you change out leaner or richer how much air passes the progression holes that we adjusted earlier to get all the numbers to line up the same across an even air fuel ratio or as even as possible. You want this thing like to be pretty close across all six cylinders. All right, so we're disconnecting our linkage again on this hot motor. There we go. Disconnected. Disconnected. All right, so there we are. That's beautiful. It's right where we want to be. Just about five, okay? Now, where are we on our front carb? We are not there. We're running a lot richer. So, we come here and we close off the progression hole a bit. There it is, look. Right where we want it. See what we got here? Running a bit lean. So we're gonna richen it up. Just turn it in. Boom, right where we want it. All right, beautiful. We're gonna cut the engine again, reconnect our linkages, and that's where we wanna be. So in essence, that's how it's done. Well, let me just say this. This whole process calls for a great deal of patience, time, and understanding. Tuning is never a one-shot thing. It is not a perfect science. However, following these basic rules should give you the framework you need to achieve your goals. The more you understand the way these carbs function and what they need to perform, you will develop a deeper understanding of your car, and the two of you will benefit immensely from that. So if you're after the peak performance of the era, your vintage car deserves nothing less. That's why we choose these things. That being said, this kind of analog tunability is definitely a purist game. It's reserved for those of us who truly want to be in dialogue with our machines. And honestly, if you're not doing that, well, what are you really talking about? We hope you guys found this episode helpful. Good luck and happy tuning. See you next time.